what does it feel like to be successful? Now I know. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all good. Today we're going to be chatting about my July wrap up, all the books I read in July. And let me tell you, it was my most successful reading month of the year so far. I read 13 books in July. The most books I've ever read in a month actually was 14. So we could have like topped it. And I didn't even read that much in the last week of the month. So we could have, we could have topped it. I really, I played myself, but I am still happy with 13. So if you don't know how I do my wrap ups, I'm going to talk about all my reading statistics first, and then we'll get into talking about the individual books. So I read 13 books. I read a total of 3,715 pages. This works out to about 119 pages per day, which is a pretty good number, and an average book length of 285. So I read quite a few shorter books this month, uh, but I really enjoyed that. I like I like reading some shorter books. It gets the numbers up, what can I say? So I did have an average rating of 3.26, which is the second lowest average rating I've had so far this year for a month. But uh, that was, that that was because of one particular video, really. <laughs> and it's all your fault. I hope you're happy because I've told mom. So I don't feel that bad about it. It was because of like three books I read for one particular video. So it's not really that representative. So in terms of the individual star ratings, I gave, I didn't give out any five stars this month, which is kind of sad. <laughs> I feel like we're gonna get so many five stars in August. If you watched my new TBR game, in this plug. <laughs> if you watch my new TBR game, you'll know I have so many good books lined up for August. So I feel like we're gonna get a lot of five stars in August. So it's okay. I gave one 4.5 star, three four stars, three 3.5 stars, four three stars, one 2.5 star, and one one star. In terms of the genres that I read, I read three contemporary. I didn't actually read any fantasy this month, which fantasy is usually my most read genre, so that's kind of crazy. I read one historical, three mystery, you love to see it, three non-fiction, two sci-fi, and one thriller. Uh, in terms of the audience, very interestingly, nine were adult and four were YA. So usually that is like 50-50, but I read a lot more adult this month, which I don't know how I feel about that. I really know how I feel like that. I didn't realise I didn't read as much YA as usual. In terms of how I acquired the books, one was a gift, one was sent from the publisher, one was on script, and ten were books that I had previously owned or bought myself. So I read a lot of books this month that I bought. <laughs> which is kind of interesting as well. Like usually I read a lot of books I've been gifted because I am gifted a lot of books very luckily or pu from publishers, but I read a lot that I've bought this month. In terms of like if it's a series or not, four were part of a series and nine were standalones. I think for the year as a whole, it's like 50-50 standalone or part of a series and like I'm trying to not read as much series I'm trying to or at least I'm trying to finish series that I am in the middle of because I think for like reading vlogs specifically I start series and then I don't continue them in reading vlogs because I don't think people are going to care about like seeing me read the second book in a series which I know is stupid and I know you do care but I just start the series and then I never continue on with them. <laughs> are you not ashamed of yourself? In terms of author race, I read from four black authors, two Latinx authors, one Mexican author, and six white authors. So that was under 50% white authors, which is like always my goal. And then in terms of author status, two were debut authors, four were authors I had read before, and seven were new to me. Okay, so let's talk about the individual books. Now I always try to not like, listen. <laughs> I struggle with like not going on about the books for like five minutes, even though I've already spoken to you about them in reading vlogs. Like it's a real, it's something I struggle with. I really need to contain myself. Oh, if I Jesus. could give you one piece of advice, it would be shut the fuck up. Let's talk about the three books that weren't featured in any reading vlog that I kind of read just on my own. So first is Freedom is a Constant Struggle by Angela Y. Davis. This is a collection of essays and speeches by the actor 
activist Angela Davis and this was really insightful. I gave this four stars. I listened to the audiobook and she narrated the audiobook so I'd really recommend the audiobook for that purpose because she you know puts the emphasis where she would put it in speeches and stuff and there's also like interviews that she's done with people that's put in this. I thought that this was really really interesting. It touched a lot on prison abolition and that's a topic that I'm really interested in particularly like in the context of the United States and the prison industrial complex you know how much money is tied up in prisons, how rich companies get from exploiting the prison system. Also just how entrenched in racism the prison system is and hearing her speak about about how prisons, particularly in the format that they're in in the US, like are not conducive to rehabilitation or, you know, actually helping society in the grand scheme of things. So I thought that was really interesting. She also touched a lot on Palestine and the Palestinian struggle, which um, I also really found very interesting to read about. So I really, really recommend this. I found it very, very educational and insightful. Um, I would say the reason I gave it like a four star and not a five star was that there's a lot of repetition because these are a collection of speeches. And like sometimes there'll be like a very similar passage in like three of the speeches. So you're just listening to it again. And of course it's like relevant because each time she was giving that message to different people in that place, but I feel like maybe for the purposes of the book that could have been edited a bit. I don't, I don't know. Next, I read Furia. Furia. This is like a YA contemporary about this girl. She loves to play football. She plays soccer. It's not soccer. It's football, but whatever. You know. If you're gonna play a game, girl, play it right. <laughs> I love football. If you don't know about me, but um. Football gal. I found her loving football and like the journey of her playing football and the sexism that exists and, and how difficult it is to play football and how she has to hide it from her family. That was super interesting but a lot of it is taken up with this romance with this her childhood friend who has become a really successful footballer for Juventus and I just like didn't I didn't buy into it. I would say at the start there's a lot about the football, her playing football, and at the end there's a lot about her playing the football. But the whole middle section is this romance. And so by I was just I just wanted us to talk about the football and like her, you know, struggling in this very um like patriarchal society to like play the game that she loves. But then we had loads about the romance, and then by the time we got to the end and we finally got more about the football, I was just a bit disconnected and like uninterested. It wasn't bad, like it was fine. I gave it three stars, but I just wasn't in love with it. I just felt like the romance didn't add more than it took away. I feel like sometimes with wire contemporaries, there is this tendency to make it all about the romance when the actual topic that the rest of the book was about was much more interesting to me. Listen, don't get me wrong, the romance was fine, but I was just like, let's just talk more about football. <laughs> That's what I came here for. Next, I read Home by Nnedi Okorafor. This is the sequel to Binti, which I feel like a lot of you know about. This is like a novel a trilogy basically and I'm reading this as part of my objective to finish series that I start. I made like last month I think or this I saw this month I made a series spreadsheet about all the series that I've started and let me tell you I wanted the ground to like swallow me up. You good? No you're not. You're not baby and it's okay. I am so ashamed at how many series I've started and haven't continued so this is like an easy place to start because they're short novellas that I can access quite easily. So I'm gonna, I read this one this month and I'm probably gonna try and finish the series next month. Even though I, I don't think I've loved any of the books, like they're okay. I've given, I think both of them three stars. I gave this three stars. But basically in this, Binti is going home and uh, discovering what home means to, means to her. It's science fiction and I really like the world that's been built up. But I just struggled to read this. It took me like a whole week to read it and it's like 160 pages. I just didn't really want to read it. I think I listened to Binti as an audiobook and I think I preferred that, but I couldn't find the audiobook for this anywhere. Listen, I'm excited for the satisfaction of finishing this series, but I just thought it was okay. I really don't have any thoughts about it. Like, it was fine. I enjoy the world building. I think the writing itself is great, but something, I, something about it I just didn't click with. Okay, and then let's quickly... <laughs> okay. I'm gonna try and not spend too long on these. I will point you towards all the videos that these are in. Let's talk about all the other books I read this month. So first I read History of What Comes Next by Sylvain Nouvelle. I read this in a try chapter tag where I read the first chapter of three books and I read the whole book of whatever one interested me most. And this was by far the wackiest like Oh my god, this first this book was made for the first chapter challenge because let me tell you, the first chapter of this ends in a way that you're like, oh, Oh shit, uh, 
okay. <laughs> Too much drama for me. This is a sci-fi about this lineage of women who throughout history have tried to get humanity to the stars, basically, is kind of their, their motto. In this one, they are trying to manipulate kind of like the space race from like the end of World War II into like the 60s, I guess. I just thought it was so interesting. I just thought this was, Sylvain Nouvelle does some of my favorite sci-fi. I think he's my favorite sci-fi author like by a long mile. And it was just like, strange like it's a difficult book to describe to you but I really loved how it manipulated real events from history and kind of like inserted our main character Mia into it and like she took the credit for it and it just makes it more believable because there is an element of truth to it and you can kind of you know fiction is a lie these books are a lie and every fiction book has to convince us that it's real basically it made it so much easier to do that because you're like Mia was there Mia was pulling the strings Mia was behind it all my queen Mia was there it's a conspiracy theory that I'm actually interested in so yeah I really really enjoyed it it hasn't had great reviews it's strange it's told in a very strange way like there's no speech marks it's like just told through dashes and it's never like this person said like you've got to keep track of who's talking because it's literally just told through dashes so it's like weird I understand why a lot of people didn't like it, but I would really recommend it. I thought it was very imaginative. I gave it four stars and I love Sylvain Nouvelle and I can't wait to read all of his stuff because I think he's actually a really, really great sci-fi author. So listen, I say don't listen. Listen, don't listen. <laughs> Don't listen to everyone saying it's crap because I really enjoyed it. Then next I read two books for my booktuber scavenger hunt video where booktubers give me prompts and pick what I read and then send me on to the next booktuber. So, moment of silence please. Moment of silence. Moment of silence. I don't want to talk about it. I don't, it was hard enough to talk about this in the vlog. I can't even look at the wall without thinking sad things. I read The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle and I gave this, what did I give it, 3.5? I gave this 3.5 stars. This was a five star prediction. Fuck, you know, fuck my life. Uh, many of you probably know this is the story of Evelyn Hardcastle who dies at this party that her family are throwing and our protagonist is waking up in the body of a different party guest every day and he has to like relive the day and try and figure out who killed Evelyn Hardcastle. Listen, I love the premise. I love the idea of it. I love the vibes. So like the first half of this book, I was into it. Like I was like, we're, we're going somewhere. This is so much fun. I loved, you know, waking up in these different bodies, the detective work the complexity but then for me the book just started to trip up over itself and thought it was like so clever and it didn't work it was supposed to give but it did not give what needed to be gave i feel like it spun so many threads that by the end i was like this isn't satisfying like the way that it ended was like that's it that's it that's it. it also had that thing where like the baddie like here's how it all happened and I'm just like can we avoid that I know it's hard to avoid that but like let's please avoid that because it just wasn't satisfying and then also for that video I read Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers I really enjoyed this it's I gave it four stars on Goodreads everyone says it's a romance but I categorized it as a contemporary because I don't think it's really about the romance so we following Grace she's like a very kind of like burnt out stressed person she's given everything to her career for most of her life and she goes to Vegas and she gets drunk and gets married to this girl out there and it's about her not only kind of figuring out this like new relationship in her life but it's about her coming to terms with like the burnout that she's facing how difficult it's been to meet up to her parents expectations how she's been on this treadmill for so long and she's kind of reached this end point of like her PhD and stuff and she's like oh shit what do I do now? So it's not really about the romance. The romance plays a role in kind of facilitating Grace realizing stuff, but I feel like it's much more about the journey that Grace goes on. And I thought it was beautifully written, like some of the most beautiful writing. So I really, really recommend this. Okay, then I did a video where I tested out whether beautiful covers means beautiful insides. Whether if a book has a most beautiful cover, whether I'm gonna love that book. I read Fat Chance Charlie Vega by Crystal Maldonado and I loved this. I gave it 4.5 stars. This is my favorite book I read this month. This is the story of Charlie Vega who is fat and it's about 
not only, you know, the way that, like, society kind of disrespects her because of that, her mum tries to put weight loss shakes on her, boys constantly use her to get to her best friend, but it's also about, like, this romance that she has with this guy at her work, and it was just really beautiful, like, I really, I really just loved it. She's incredible, she's a beautiful person, her talent and brilliance is beyond. I just thought it was such a nice YA contemporary. It's like one of my favorite YA contemporaries I think I've ever read. I really loved Charlie as a character. I loved the storyline. I thought it was paced so well. I thought it was written so well. It had that kind of like softness that I really like in YA, that kind of like soft joyfulness that I think is really cute. And I would just recommend this to anyone who reads like YA contemporary romances. Then, I read a book that I think is very forgettable. I read Circus of Wonders by Elizabeth McNeil. I gave this 3.5 stars. Uh, this is about this young girl, her name's Nell, right? Who has birthmarks that kind of, you know, it's set in like Victorian times. So she's very much singled out because of her birthmarks. And it's about her being sold into the circus and the kind of life that she leads there. Now, this is like your historical fiction that knows it's clever, that knows it's a great book and is a bit more like serious. I thought this book's discussion of the abuse that many people faced in circuses in the Victorian times was great, particularly after seeing films like The Greatest Showman, which, you know, everyone loves, but that guy was not nice. He took advantage of marginalized and disadvantaged people to make money off of them, basically. So I thought its discussion around that and the toxicity of circuses at this time was very good, but I was just a bit bored and I wasn't as into it as I wanted to be. The ending, the ending, the last like epilogue did get me. I'm not gonna lie. I'm thinking about that right now and my heart. Oh, oh, mm. <laughs> I know, I don't wanna get upset. Don't get no, upset. Don't worry. It's... My heart is breaking a little bit. I'm not gonna lie to you. But on the whole, it just was like a bit lackluster for me. And I just wanted something more and it never really gave me more. And then I read The Mystery of the Blue Train by Agatha Christie and I gave this three stars. So this is the sixth in the Hercule Poirot series, which as many of you know, I'm reading in order. And listen, it just wasn't for me. It was just a bit boring. And the ending, I said in the video how my favorite kind of endings from Agatha Christie are when it's not only the person you couldn't expect being the murder, but it's the it's the way that the murder was done that is crazy and like unexpected. And this just wasn't that. It was just a bit like, okay. It's about this girl who is murdered on the train that her husband is on, but they're like getting a divorce. And it's this whole thing. And it was just okay. It wasn't the best uh, Cuparo for me. Then in a wrapped up episode, if you don't know, I have wrapped up a lot of my books and I unwrap them and I read them. I read when no what is watching by Alyssa Cole. I gave this 3.5 stars. This one was also a bit disappointing for me, particularly because of the ending again. So this is about kind of gentrification in Brooklyn. This woman, her town, her street, houses that were previously owned by black people keep getting bought up very suddenly and white people keep moving in and something sinister is going on. And I really enjoyed, again, like the first maybe even 200 pages of this. It was really good, really slow, suspense building, like a really good thriller. And at the end it went fucking bonkers. And I just feel like if you're gonna go fucking bonkers, it needed to happen a bit earlier because it was just a bit like too much too quick. Like it was like, whoa, what the? Oh, like, what I wasn't expecting that at all. I felt I feel like it either needed to continue that kind of suspenseful slow pace or be crazy a bit earlier. I would have accepted either of them, but for me reading this, I was like, oh my god, what is that? And then these last three books, I'm just gonna like speed through. I read them because they are Kylie Jenner's favorite books for a video. I will link that, like all these videos, if you want to go check it out. I read Only Love Is Real by Dr. Brian Weiss. This is a psychiatrist who believes he can connect you to your past lives. We all have past lives. And if you have a pain in your shoulder, it's because you were stabbed in the back in Roman times. But I gave it one star. I didn't buy into it. Didn't really like it. Didn't even like the writing itself. The guy needed a co-writer and it just wasn't good. Wouldn't recommend it. Don't waste your time. Then, then ladies and gentlemen, I read Pretty Little Liars. Now I gave this three stars. Listen, this was shit. It was awful, it was trash, but I enjoyed the reading experience. I'm not gonna lie to you, I did enjoy the reading experience. The rules don't apply. It was awful, but like I kind of admired it for its awfulness. These people are awful, it's problematic as shit, but I enjoyed reading it. 
please don't judge me. And then finally, I read The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. This is another like spiritual self-help book about the secrets behind the world. I thought it was interesting, but, 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 but I also felt like it was kind of just like saying common sense and like passing off as like, oh my God, I'm so genius. It was like, don't take things too personally. Always do your best. I'm like, girl, these are things we just need to like, no, like they're just common sense. They're just normal human morals. I didn't think it was anything super insightful. So I gave it 2.5 stars. So there we have it. That is all of the books that I read this month, plus obviously the three that I don't own physically. So a great month in terms of volume for me, but not in terms of like ratings. I didn't have many like great books in terms of ratings, but I'm still happy with how the month went. Let me know how your reading month went down below in July. I would love to know any plans you've got for August as well. And if you've gotten to the end, comment a train emoji for the mystery of the blue train. Comment that down below. Um, thank you so much for watching as always. I really, really appreciate it. I cannot thank you guys all enough for your support lately. I just love making videos and I'm just, I'm just enjoying it so much. So thank you so, so much. And yeah, I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.